The Dwarf 2 is among the most popular smart telescopes currently available, so it was our duty to finally review it. The Dwarf 2 is a very small, lightweight, easy-to-use telescope that's unique by having two lenses instead of one, but can it be useful for astrophotography? The Dwarf 2 is also the most affordable smart telescope out there, but how does it compete in this new age of smart telescopes? In this review, we will try capturing the beauty of space using the Dwarf 2 smart telescope and see what results we can get from it. Be sure to also read our written review, which has much more in-depth information about this telescope. Okay, so let's quickly open this box and see what comes with the deluxe version of the Dwarf 2. See further. Nice, I'm getting the system. Let's see what's in there. What do we have? Okay, this is a filter the holder. So for the two lenses, with a nice uh, Yorsa Major um, on the back here, which is really cool. Okay, very nice. I'm gonna put this Cute. back here. And then this, uh, those are the filters here. So we have two uh, solo filters, because since you have two lenses, you need uh, to put one on each side. And I believe this is a UHC filter. And next we probably have the telescope itself. So let's grab it like this. Let's put the box away. And it comes with a carrying pouch. And as you can see, the whole telescope fits in there, which is insane to me because the tripod is also in there. So it's That's, super cool. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a smart telescope where everything is actually available in the pouch. All right, so here we have the manual. This is the lanyard. So this is for the bag. Here we have a battery for the telescope. Okay. This is what the battery for the Dwarf 2 looks like. Nice. They include a 64 gigabyte uh, SD card, which is very, very nice of them to include. And then we have the tripod. So it's a very small tripod, but because the Dwarf is so tiny and light, uh, you don't need a, a larger tripod than that. And this is what the tripod looks like. Um, I like how it's like a, an alien spaceship. It kind of looks right. like a squid. Yeah, that's funny. Okay, and lastly, we have the Dwarf Telescope itself. So let's grab it over here. Now the pouch is empty. And this is the Dwarf Telescope, just fresh out of the box. Very cool. So we're going to uh, learn how to use it. Let's see here, I guess, where so the battery comes. And there's also another battery in there. So you oh, have well, two Oh, well, yeah, batteries. then you can have two. Charge one while the other is in use. Which is great. And then uh, we'll take a look at this and do a proper review ASAP. So let's quickly go over the specs of the Dwarf 2 before we try it under the stars. So the Dwarf 2 weighs 2.6 pounds, which is 1.2 kilograms, making it the lightest and most portable ever, at least for now, smart telescope out there so far. Um, and it will fit in pretty much any bag, including, of course, the small case that it comes with. It fits anywhere. Uh, the Dwarf 2 uh, has a periscope design and comes with an IMX 415 Starvis sensor. It has two lenses, one wide-angle lens and one telephoto lens. It has an aperture of 24 mm, which is 0.9 inch. The Dwarf 2 telescope has built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and you can save images as PNG or FITS. And if you'd like to process the data yourself on a computer, you can. The mount design is an Alt-As, and there is also an EQ mode, which is the first in smart telescopes. But we're going to talk about that later. Also, you can slew very, very fast, which surprised us. At the time of writing this review, the classic edition of the Dwarf 2 costs $459 plus tax in the United States. The deluxe edition costs $595 plus tax. About the filters, uh, the filters are available for the Dwarf 2 and can be attached using a magnetic filter holder. Uh, very simple here. And there are two main filters you can purchase. Uh, one is a UHC filter, uh, which is for light pollution. And the other one is an ND solar filter, which is the combined two, and that's for the sun. Show the folks how you put it back on. <laughs> so the filters are really easy to attach, obviously, as you saw. Haha. <laughs> and all you need to do is just snap them, snap them on using the, the filter plate. That, that's it. You you saw it happen in real time. 
The ND solar filters need to be used as a set of two because both the wide angle and telephoto lens have to be covered and protected when pointing at the sun. So the filter plate has a standard 1.25 inch screw thread and that is compatible with pretty much any 1.25 inch filter. So that means that you can, if you like, purchase a dual band filter or any other filter that is the same size from any company and use it on the Dwarf 2. That's good. So how do you set up the Dwarf 2 telescope? It's really hard. <laughs> no, it's not. It only takes seconds to set up the Dwarf 2 and then you just turn it on. Get it, get the tripod out, screw the tripod onto the base, open the legs, pew, 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 set it on the ground. Wow, that's so hard. But you do have to make sure that the ground where you place the telescope is level. That's always important with smart telescopes. Press the power button and that's it. So that was easy, right? So if you plan on using filters, you can first rotate the lenses up to reveal the opening and snap the filter plate on there before turning on the telescope. The Dwarf 2, like any other smart telescope, is meant to be controlled through your phone. And the app that you download for the Dwarf is the Dwarf Lab app, like the name of the company. And it's free and often updated, and it's made of three main tabs. So you'll see that the left tab is the album tab where you'll be able to see all the pictures that you've taken so far with the Dwarf 2 telescope. Uh, when you tap on an image, it'll open in full screen with an option to download the file to your smartphone. And you can also delete each file directly from the app. Neat. The center tab, the second one, uh, is the home tab. And one of the most important sections here is the picture of the Dwarf 2, which you can tap to access the imaging window. Then you also have the light setting. And this light is pretty bright green. And if it's close to other telescopes, it could be very bothersome and it can create reflections, which is a super no-no. We live in the darkness, so you can just turn it off there, which is really great. Uh, once both are turned off, the telescope won't emit any light. The third tab is a settings tab. So here you'll be able to access the settings and information like the current version of the app and other fun things you might, that you might want to learn about. The place that you'll spend the most time in, however, won't be any of the ones that I mentioned. Instead, it'll be the imaging window, which you can get access to by tapping on the dwarf's image in the home tab. Boom. So here, really quickly, just to show you how to use this uh, new dashboard, you can click here on the right side to change the speed of the slewing, so you can go very, very fast. Then on top here, you can see I can switch between both lenses. So one is the wide angle lens, and one is the telephoto lens. So if I aim at my target here, I can then switch the lenses and even hide on the other lens using this shortcut here. You can use the autofocus or focus uh, manually using the um, bottom right icon here. Here's the autofocus did an almost a good job, but I can probably get better like this. On the right side, you have the album icon, which you can select to access all your photos right away. Underneath you have the mode icon, so you can either be in photo mode, video mode, uh, astro mode, panel or burst. You'll probably be in astro mode most of the time. And once you select your mode, uh, if you go down to function, you can then change some uh, settings and preferences for that specific mode. So for example, here we can calibrate the telescope, we can um, look for targets, you have here a lot of targets you can uh, slew to. So solar, planets, stars, nebulae, galaxy, and more. You also can do manual uh, slewing using coordinates, or you can simply, well, of course, use the joystick here to slew manually. For our first image attempt, we told the Dwarf 2 to aim at the easiest nebula for beginner astrophotographers, the Dorai Nebula. And we shot this object for about one hour. And our main goal was just to compare the result with other popular smart telescopes, which you can see in the thing that the video that we just made. Just click on it. So with just one hour of integration time and from a Borel 9 backyard, we can say that this result is not bad at all. And this is without any processing and just a quick crop. The core is not overexposed, 
the gases making M42 are visible, as well as the ones making M43. The running man nebula is slightly visible also, and the background looks clean. We then did two more deep sky objects, which was the Horsehead Nebula and the Rosette Nebula, and we didn't use any filters for it. So this picture of the Horsehead Nebula has a total integration time of two hours. On the left, you can see the result coming straight out of the Dwarf 2 app, and on the right here is the same file, but processed on the computer using PixInsight. As you can see, it's very difficult to spot anything on the original image besides the bright flame nebula. All the signal is there, and comes to life if you take time to process the data yourself manually on the computer, as seen on the right. It's so fun to learn that you should also have processing skills even if you have a smart telescope. Exactly. So we're not surprised that the horse head gases are not visible on the left. We knew that, as the horse head nebula section is really tough to image from a Bortle 9, and especially without a filter. So, you know, it would be much better for a darker site if we were to shoot this target. Yeah. And here you can see the same for the Rosette Nebula. So on the left is two hours of integration time stacked and downloaded straight from the app. You can see the center cluster of stars and hints of HA all throughout the field of view. On the right side is the exact same data processed with PixInsight. Wow, what a difference. So pretty. And as you saw in these images, large targets fit well in the Dwarf 2's field of view. One thing to note, though, is that the longer that you spend on a target, the more that you'll need to crop in order to remove the, the visible edges. As the telescope does not have a field D rotator and sits on an alt-as type of mount. Here you can see the original full-size images before applying a crop. Keep this in mind if you decide to image large deep sky objects, as a short integration time might be best if you do not want to sacrifice your edges. Yep. So there's actually one thing that you can do to combat the issue of field rotation, and that's by using the Dwarf 2 in EQ mode. And you know what? That's right. The Dwarf 2, unlike other smart telescopes that have come out so far, supports EQ tracking. To achieve a great polar alignment, you need to tape a straw, you know, maybe pasta if you don't have a straw, save the turtles. Um, to the side of the dwarf, making sure that it's aligned parallel to the telescope's azimuth axis, and then align Polaris in the opening for calibration. One thing to note here though, is that we recorded and shot these right before the new major update came out uh, for the app, so that's very important to know because the update added stacking for planets, the sun and the moon, which gives a much better result than we got. And so we'll have some updated pics uh, from Dwarf Lab and we'll include them alongside ours, just so it's fair. Jupiter does not look good with the Dwarf too. And like we said, the telescope is not made for imaging planets and the focal length is just not long enough, but at least a couple of the planet's moons are visible, so that's really neat to see and you could show that to your friends or children. And with a new update though, you should be able to get something like this, which is an insane difference. So, very important to note. We then pointed the Dwarf 2 telescope at the moon, which is currently in a nice space with lots of craters visible, so we love seeing that. So the moon is large and bright, so it's an easy target for most telescopes. In this case, the moon is nice and the colors look natural, the only problem is the resolution, which is enough if looking at the image as is, but quickly shows its limitation when zooming in on the image. Mm. With a stacking feature and using bin 1, that problem should be fixed, and you can get something like this. So now the sun, uh, that was easy to capture with a Dwarf 2 telescope, and it's also very simple to find in the sky manually if you use the wide field lens to aim at it. So both solar filters need to be attached to the Dwarf 2 because you have to protect both lenses. Several sunspots are visible on the sun and the color can be fixed if you use a different white balance. So we'll do our best to update our written review with new images from what the stacking feature can produce since the update, so be sure to take a look at the written post in the near future. So, is the Dwarf 2 good for astrophotography? So here are what we believe are the main positive and negative points about the Dwarf 2. So go ahead, do the positives and I'll do the negatives. Just like real life. <laughs> so the Dwarf is the smallest and the lightest smart telescope out there 
right now and at least the one the smallest lightest one that we have ever tried its size and weight are honestly unbelievable you saw me going like this to it the and to set the standard as to what smart telescopes should strive to be like in terms of size and portability and it's really really simple to take with you anywhere you go the next thing is the dual lens design which is really nice and is very unique for this smart telescope and then the magnetic filter adapter so this is one of the coolest things about the dwarf too once the filter filters of your choice are mounted on the filter holder plate you just need to snap the plate on using a magnetic base and then that's that's it. One feature that we haven't found in other smart telescopes also is the ability to track in equatorial mode. So that allows you to take longer exposures and not have issues with field rotation. So now the negatives. Uh, so as always with smart telescopes, it's not gonna beat uh, you know a full astro rig. So obviously don't expect like super high resolution images and that, as you would with like a regular uh, astro setup. And also planets and some deep sky objects will not look good. You won't be able to, let's say, get great pictures of like all the messy objects, for example, because the Dwarf 2 mostly produces good results on the largest and brightest objects in the night sky. So we hope you liked this review. Make sure you check out the uh, return review, which will be updated with new pictures in the future. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. We'll have a link below for the Dwarf 2 if you want to get it. And uh, clear skies. Thank you.